the book of Deuteronomy, part four. In the last lecture, uh, we've been doing uh, the same thing uh, as we are going to do in this lecture, um, which is a recap of events and uh, of the laws. But uh, I want to tell all of my brothers and sisters in Christ that I love them, and uh, I also want to pray to our Father for wisdom and guidance, as always. Uh, you should always pray to our Father for wisdom and guidance before you study. Um, this pleases him and it also lets him know that you are concerned enough to uh, petition to him for uh, knowledge and wisdom. With that said, uh, let's pray to our Father. Our Father, who are in heaven, our glorious creator, who created the heavens and the earth that all and that all that dwell therein. You are righteous and just, and we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we ask that you reveal the truth from your word and bless all those that are listening with us and put your hand upon their lives. And we also pray for the lost to come to repentance and into the light. And we ask all these things for your good will and your good purpose. And we ask all of it, nothing wavering, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Okay, uh, so we left off at the end of uh, chapter 15. And uh, I was getting kind of tired by the end of uh, chapter 15. It's pretty late in the night, so I, I apologize. Uh, so the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 1 remember okay hold on I have it on the easy or the English revised version but I'm going to go back to King James because I was reading to my son and uh, I needed a version that he could understand better but anyways uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 16 and per verse 1 observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of, of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of, the, out of Egypt by night. Uh, so the month of Abib is the, the first day of, I mean the first month of uh, G the Jewish calendar. And uh, the Passover would be on the 14th day of that first month. Uh, that's when our father brought uh, the Israelites forth out of Egypt from the house of bondage. Um, but anyways, uh, verse 2. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Verse 3. Thou shalt eat no leavened bre bread with it. And uh, I've explained this many times that uh, leavened bread is symbolic of uh, being deceived or deception or uh, preaching false doctrine. Uh, seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction. Now, uh, this uh, bread of affliction was eaten because of uh, actually two things. Um, and it's also called... Uh, by the Jews, uh, it's called matzah, and that it, it, uh, matzah represents two things: the food of our slavery and the food we ate in our haste to leave Egypt. The he Hagadon begins by referring to matzah as the bread of affliction, the food of slavery. In other words, uh, it represents uh, the affliction and uh, distress that the Israelites were uh, suffering in the house of bondage which was in Egypt when they were slaves uh, but anyways uh, back to uh, verse 3 I'll just start it over thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread therewith even the bread of affliction for thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt, all the days of thy life. 
In other words, to keep it in their minds so they uh, re would remember what our Father did for them and how he brought them out with a might mighty hand. Verse 4. And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days. Neither shall there, there anything of the flesh which thou sacrificest the first day at even remain not all night until the morning. In other words, uh, it was supposed to be uh, eaten that night. Um, verse 5. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within uh, any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Verse 6. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in, there shalt thou sacrifice Passover at even, at the going down of the sun, at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. So that's the month of Abib. Uh, but um, this place that they would offer the sacrifice would uh, not be in, in their dwelling place, but it would be a place out of their dwelling place where our Father would uh, choose for them to offer the sacrifice. Verse 7. And thou shalt roast and eat it in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto thy tents. Verse 8. Six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work therein. Verse 9. Seven weeks shalt thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. Uh, verse 10. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with the tribute of a free will offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Verse 11. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son, and thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite that is within thy gates, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are among you, in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen, to place his name there. And uh, we are supposed to rejoice always in the salvation which was uh, brought forth by our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and this is an example of rejoicing uh, of it because uh, Christ was the actual sacrificial lamb. Um, this, this in the, the, uh, the Old Testament was an example of what was to come in the latter, in the latter days. In other words, uh, when Christ uh, came as uh, the Messiah or Emmanuel, uh, God dwelling with man. Verse 12. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do these statutes. And you could take this as uh, how some of us, or well, all of us, used to be slaves to sin. Um, and we're supposed to remember what our Father done, had done for us, uh, what, what our Lord Jesus Christ had done for us, to uh, bring us out of the bondage of sin. Uh, in other words, we're not supposed to practice sin anymore. Uh, but um, when we do sin, uh, we are supposed to uh, go to our Father uh, to ask for forgiveness and repent. Verse 13. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days after that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. Verse 14. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast Thou and thy son, and thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, that are with, within thy gates. Verse 15. Seven days thou shalt keep a solemn uh, feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose, because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase, and in all the works of thine hands, therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. Uh, rejoicing in uh, what God has done for, for them and for all of us. Verse 16. Three times in a year shall all the males appear before the Lord thy God, in the place which he shall choose, 
in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Uh, just as us, uh, we're supposed to offer our un, un uh, divided love unto our Father uh, in truth and in spirit. And then uh, we're supposed to rejoice and overcome this world uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which uh, the blood that he shed for us on the cross for one and all times for sin, uh, there's power in that blood. And uh, only if everyone believed that. Verse 17, everyone shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Verse 18. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Verse 19. Thou shalt not rest judgment, thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift. A gift doth blind the eyes of the wise, and pervert the words of the righteous. In other words, uh, this talk about bribes. In, in other words, ex exchanging bribes uh, uh, for uh, someone who is guilty, uh, taking a bribe to let him go, is what it is. Verse 20. That which is altogether just, thou shalt follow, that thou mayest live, and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Verse 21. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Verse 22, Neither shalt thou set thee up any image which the Lord thy God hateth. So, uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter uh, 17 and verse 1. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep, wherein is it blemish, or any evil favoredness. And this evil favoredness is... Uh, It's uh, from the Hebrew partition, 7451, uh, Ra, Ra'ah, and it's a bad, evil, naturally or morally. This includes the second feminine form as an adjective or noun. Adversity, affliction, bad, calamity. Uh, in other words, uh, I think this is referring to an animal that is evil, obviously, and one that has blemishes. Uh, Anyways, moving on. For that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Verse 2. If there be found any among you within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman, that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God, and transgressing his covenant, verse 3, and hath gone and served other gods, and worshipped them, either the sun or the moon, or any of the hosts of heaven, which I have not commanded. Verse 4. And he be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true, and the thing certain that such an abomination is wrought in Israel. Verse 5. Then shalt thou bring forth that man or woman which have committed that wicked thing unto the gates, even that man or that woman, and shall stone them with stones till they die. Verse 6. At the month of two, I mean, at, at the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death, because it would be hearsay, and uh, they wouldn't be able to figure out who is telling the truth. Verse seven. The hands of the witness, I mean, the witnesses, shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterward the hands of all the people, so thou shalt put the evil away from among you. Verse 8. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment be between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, then thou shalt arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Verse 9. And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judges, that shall be in those days, and inquire, and they shall shew thee the sentence of judgment. Verse 10. 
and thou shalt do according to the sentence, which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall shew thee, and thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee. Verse 11. According to the sentence of the law which they shall teach thee, and according to the judgment which they shall teach thee, or which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall shew thee to the right hand nor to the left. In other words, uh, not giving more to the sentence or not giving less to the sentence. Verse 12. And the man that it will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priests that stand to minister there before the Lord thy God, or unto the judge, even that man shall die, and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. Verse 13. And all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. And presumptuously in, in the Hebrew is a Hebrew partition 2102 and its primitive root to see figuratively to be insolent, be proud, deal proudly. In other words, being proud of doing evil uh, and pride. In other words, lifting up your heart to do evil. Verse 14. When thou art come unto the land which the, the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Verse 15. Thou shalt, shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among the, the brethren shalt thou king set king over thee thou mayest not set a stranger over thee which is not thy brother and uh, this is something that uh, the Israelites do do and uh, this would be in uh, the book of uh, Samuel, 1st Samuel actually verse 16 but he shall not multiply horses to himself nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses for as much as the Lord hath said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Verse 17. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. In other words, uh, coveting gold and silver and uh, multitudes of wives, which uh, was known back in that day. Verse 18. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the, I mean upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book, out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. Verse nineteen. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law, and these statutes to do them. Verse twenty that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he t turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. So uh, chapter 18 and verse 1. The priests, the Levites, and all the tribe of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire and his inheritance. Verse 2. Therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren. The Lord is their inheritance, as he hath said unto, unto them. Verse 3. And this shall be the priests do from the people from them that offer a sacrifice, whether it be of ox or sheep, and they shall give unto the priest the shoulder and the two cheeks in the mar, in the maw. Verse four: The first fruits also of thine corn, of thy wine and of thy oil, and the first of the fleece of thy sheep shalt thou give him. Verse five. For the Lord thy God hath chosen him out of all thy tribes to stand to minister in, in the name of the Lord, him and his sons forever. Verse 6. And if a Levite come from any of thy gates out of all Israel, 
where he sojourned, and come with all the desire of his mind unto the place which the Lord shall choose. Verse 7. Then he shall minister in the name of the Lord his God, as all his brethren the Levites do, which stand there before the Lord. Verse 8. They shall have like portions to eat, besides that which cometh of the cell of his patrimony. Verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. And uh, this is one of the reasons why our father had the Israelites go in there and purify the land. Because of all the abominations that they were doing, such as worshipping false gods and many other things. Verse 10. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth use divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Now, this uh, passing the son or daughter through the fire is offering them in the fire as a sacrificial uh, sacrifice to the, the, the god Moloch. In other words, a false god. They were burning their children. And uh, that is an abomination unto God. And it's, and I, there's no more explaining that needs to be done to that because uh, that, that is just downright cruel and awful. Verse 11. Or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. In other words, uh, things that are of the New Age movement would be considered these things. They've always been around. I don't know why they call it New Age Movement when uh, they've been ever since ancient times. Uh, verse 12. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Verse 13. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Verse 14, For these nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of times and unto to diviners or diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. <coughs> In other words, they were worshipping the Creator rather than the Creator. That's from the book of, uh, I believe it's the book of Hebrews or Romans. Um, but they didn't they didn't even know God. They didn't they weren't even seeking him. Verse fifteen The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the, the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. Verse sixteen According to all that thou desiredest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God. Neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. Verse 17. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. Verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Verse 19. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. In other words, the person that's not hearkening unto the voice of the prophet, which uh, is speaking for God. Verse 20. But the prophet which shall come shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, or even that prophet shall die. Verse 21. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? Verse 22. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing fall not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. So, uh, chapter 19 and verse 1. When the Lord thy God hath cut off the nations, 
whose land the Lord thy God giveth thee, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their cities and in their houses. Verse 2. Thou shalt separate three cities for thee in the midst of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Verse 3. Thou shalt prepare thee a way, and divide the coast of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to inherit, into three parts, that every slayer may flee hither. Verse 4. And this is the case of the slayer, which shall flee hither, that he may live. Whoso killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom hated not in time pa pass. In other words, somebody who uh, didn't lie in wait for his neighbor's blood, or... Uh, or were envious or hated them, uh, if he ignorantly killed them or killed them in self-defense or anything of that matter, it would not be murder and uh, they would have a place to flee to so the avenger of blood uh, would not be able to take vengeance on him. <coughs> but uh, if this man, who was the slayer, went out from the city uh, where he was to be uh, dwelling in until I believe it was the priest died. Um, then, and if that person who was the avenger of blood would be there waiting for him to kill him, uh, then the avenger of blood would, uh, would uh, nothing would be done to him because uh, the person who was uh, trying to flee from this man did not hearken unto the voice of the Lord our God. And, uh, yeah, verse 5. As when a man goeth into the the wood with his neighbor to hew wood, and his hand fetcheth the stroke with the cut, I mean the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slippeth from the helve, and lieth upon his neighbor that he die, he shall flee unto one of these cities and live. Verse 6. Lest the avenger of the blood pursue the slayer, while his heart is hot, and overtake him, because the way is long, and slay him. Whereas he was not worthy of death, inasmuch as he hated him not in time past. Verse 7. Wherefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not, I mean, thou shalt separate these three, city, these three cities for thee. Verse 8. And if the Lord thy God enlarge thy coast, as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, and give thee all the land which he promised to give unto thy fathers, verse 9, if thou shalt keep all the commandments to do them, which I command thee this day, to love the Lord thy God, and to walk ever in his ways, then shalt thou add three cities more for thee besides these three. In other words, they, they would be multiplied to six cities. Verse 10, that innocent blood be not shed in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. And so, blood be upon thee. Uh, in other words, innocent blood, somebody who was not actually worthy of death. Uh, if they were slain, then uh, the sin would be, be upon the land, uh, is what this sounds like. And that could uh, tell you a great deal about uh, why judgment's coming upon America. For one, uh, I'm not going to say anything about our soldiers because they're doing what they're, they've been told, but uh, and also they're being lied to uh, on the real reason why uh, they're sent over there to Iraq and uh, now Ukraine and um, innocent people are dying, men, women, and children over there. Uh, and this is one reason why uh, judgment's coming upon America. Verse 11. But if any man hate his neighbor and lie in wait for him, and rise up against him, and smite him mort mortally that he die, and fleeth into one of these cities, verse 12, then the elders of the city shall send and fetch him thence, and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood, that he may die. Verse 13. Thine eye shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel, that it may go well with thee. Verse 14. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they, they of old time have set in, in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Verse 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity, or for any sin, and any sin that he sinneth, at the mouth of two witnesses 
or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. In, in other words, I, if there was only one witness, it would be hearsay. Uh, there, nobody could actually tell who was telling the truth besides God, but uh, n no man could tell. But uh, there would have to be two or three witnesses, and at the mouth of two, two or three witnesses, uh, then that person would be uh, judged guilty. Verse 16. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, verse 17, then both men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests, and the judges shall be in those days, I mean, and the judges which shall be in those days, verse 18, and the judges shall make diligent inquisition, and behold, if the witness be a false witness and hath testified falsely against his brother, verse 19, then you shall do unto him as he had thought to do, have done unto his brother, so shalt thou put the evil away from among you. Verse 20, and those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you. Verse 21, and thine eyes shall not pity. But life shall go for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, and foot for foot. Now, uh, this is a verse that uh, some of the pastors of this uh, day like to use, uh, saying that we're not supposed to listen to the Old Testament because of things like this, because they say that Jesus uh, said that we were supposed to turn the other cheek. Well, one must take into consideration what the actual subject which our Lord was speaking of. Um, <clears throat> yes, we are supposed to uh, uh, have as much patience, patience as possible, but the reason the Lord said that, I believe anyways, is because he was sending the disciples out to preach the word of God. But I could be wrong. So, uh, the book of uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 20, and verse 1. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Verse 2. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people. Verse 3. And shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. Verse 4. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Verse 5. And the officers shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that hath built a new house and hath not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle, and another, uh, and another man dedicate it. In other words, uh, if there's a man in in uh, this army who is not right with God, that man would uh, sh perish, obviously. So uh, there, it's saying that that man uh, should dedi dedicate his house, in other words, his life to God. Verse 6, And what man is he that hath planted a vineyard, and hath not yet eaten of it? Let him also go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man eat of it. Verse 7, And what man is there that hath betrothed the wife, and hath not taken her? Let him go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man take her. Verse 8, And the officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful? And faint-hearted, let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. So the, actually the, the reason why this is being spoken is because of fear. So they're going to say, if there's anybody who's fearful, uh, turn the other way and go back to the place of what, where you came. Because uh, fear and war will get you killed. That's a fact.
Verse 9. And it shall be when the officers have made an end of speaking unto the people that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people. Verse 10. When thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it, then to proclaim peace unto it. Verse 11. And it shall be, if it make the answer of peace and open unto thee, then it shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee, and they shall serve thee. In other words, if these people are wanting to make peace with the children of Israel, um, this, that's what I got from that. Yeah, so yeah, because the verse, the next verse explains it too. So yeah, uh, if, if the people are trying to make peace with Israel, in other words, if they may make peace with Israel, then they're going to serve God too. So uh, they would be tributaries. In other words, they would pay, would pay tax and they would serve the Israelites. Verse 12. And if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. Verse 13. And when the Lord thy God hath delivered it into thine hands, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. Verse 14. But the women and the little ones, and the cattle, and all that is in the city, even the spoil thereof, shalt thou take unto thyself, and thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Verse 15. Thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far off from thee, which are not of the cities of these nations. Verse 16. But of the cities of these people which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. Because of these cities were that wicked, obviously. So he wanted it totally and utterly destroyed and uh, cleansed. So they must have been doing some serious abominations unto the Lord for uh, him to want everything uh, to be perished. Verse 17. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Verse 18. That they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their gods. So should ye sin against the Lord your God. Verse 19. When thou shalt besiege a city a long time, and make war against it, take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them. For thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut them down, for the tree of the fields is man's life, to employ them in the siege. Verse 20. Only the trees which thou knowest that they be not trees for meat, thou shalt destroy and cut them down, and thou shalt build bul bulwarks against the city that maketh war with thee until it be subdued. And uh, the reason they're not supposed to cut down the fruit trees of the trees that produce fruit is because uh, that would be food for them to keep them alive and sustained uh, during the time they were m making war. And uh, this bulwarks is like a mound. So uh, it's a defense, a fortress. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, and verse 1. If one be found slain in the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, to possess it, lying in the field, and it be not known with who hath slain him, verse 2, then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth, and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain. Verse 3, and it shall be that the city which is next unto the slain man even the elders of that city, city shall take an heifer which hath not been wrought with and which hath not drawn in the yoke. In other words, a, uh, a heifer, which 
is a cow, a female ca female calf, and uh, it had to be one that had done no work. Verse four, and the elders of that city shall bring down the heifer unto a rough valley, which is neither eared nor sown, and shall strike off the heifer's neck there in the valley. Verse five, and the priest, the sons of Levi, shall come near for them. The Lord thy God hath chosen to minister unto him, to bless in the name of the Lord, and by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried. Verse 6. And all the elders of that city that are next unto the slain man shall wash their hands over the heifer that is beheaded in the valley. Verse 7. And they shall answer and say, Our hands have not shed this blood, neither have our eyes seen it. Verse 8, Be merciful, O Lord, unto thy people Israel, whom thou hast redeemed, and lay not innocent blood unto thy people of Israel. And the blood shall be forgiven them. Verse 9, So thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from among you, when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. And all this is examples on... Uh, how we should act. In other words, we should always do what is right in the sight of our Lord. Um, and I know uh, all of us. Well, I can't. Well, I. All of us have done sinful things in the past, but we are not supposed to practice sin. Because I know of uh, certain doctrines, like the Calvinists doctrine and so forth that claim that uh, once saved, always saved stuff. But uh, we are being sanctified. Um, I don't. I believe honestly that we're not truly saved until we overcome and do, enter until the end. The end of our life or uh, the end of the age, whichever comes first. That's what I honestly believe. Okay, now where were we? Okay, verse 10. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, and the Lord thy God hath delivered them un into thine hands, and thou hast taken them captive, verse 11, and seest among the captives a beautiful woman, and hast a desire unto her, Thou wouldest have her to wife, verse 12, then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head and bear her nails, and pair her nails, in other words, trim them off, I think. Verse 13. And she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her, and she shall remain in thine house, and be well her father and her mother a full month. And after that thou shalt go in unto her, and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. Verse 14. And it shall be, if thou have no delight in her, then thou shalt let her go, whither she will, but thou shalt not sell her at all for money. Thou shalt not make merchandise of her, because thou hast humbled her. Verse 15. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the, the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, verse 16, then it shall be when he make of the sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved, of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. In other words, because he was his first son, but he was born by the wife that he does not... I would say that this should actually be love less. In other words, he loves this other wife less, and he loves this other child less than the other wife and the other son. But he's not going to... Uh, uh, be a respecter of persons in the sense and because he loves the the, the other firstborn son more uh, 
give him everything and then uh, not give anything to the other son which he hates or love, loves less verse 17 but he shall acknowledge the son of the fir hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath for he is the beginning of his strength the right of the firstborn is his because he was the firstborn he, he was born first before the other child so he would be the one who is, inherits his inheritance whereas the other one which was born second which is the beloved um, he is not going to take that right from the one that is hated or loved less verse 18 if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son which they which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother and that when they have chastened him will not hearken unto them verse 19 then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of, the, of his city and unto the gate of his place verse 20 and they shall say unto the elders of his city this our son is stubborn and rebellious he will not obey our voice he is a glutton and a drunkard verse 21 and all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die so shalt thou put evil away from among you and all Israel shall hear and fear <clears throat> in other words this was to be done as an example so uh, lawlessness wouldn't uh, run rampant uh, you see uh, if, if we were practicing the judgments of God if we were actually doing the judgments of God crime would probably be a lot less than it is now in this United States but since uh, God's judgment uh, is afar off because our our uh, justice department uh, uses man, man's judgments instead of God's uh, we have a high crime rate in this country verse 22 and if a man have committed a sin worthy of death and if he be put to death uh, and thou hang him on a tree verse 23 his body shall not remain all night upon the tree but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day for he that is hanged accursed, hanged is the curse of God that thy land be not defiled which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 1 Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. In other words, uh, you will not uh, run into the house if you see your neighbor's ox or his sheep uh, going astray. You will bring it back to him. Verse 2. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, then thou shalt bring it unto thine own house. And it shall be with thee until thy brother seek after it, and thou shalt restore it to him again. Verse 3. In like manner shalt thou do with his ass, and so shalt thou do with his raiment, and with all lost all lost thing of thy brothers, which he hath lost, and thou hast found, shalt thou do likewise. Thou mayest not hide thyself. Verse 4. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ass or his ox fall down by the way, and hide thyself from them thou shalt surely help him lift them up again in other words do unto others as you would want done unto yourself verse 5 the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do so are an abomination to the Lord thy God and I, I think this is re referring to cross-dressing verse 6 if a bird's nest chance to be before thee in the way in any tree or on the ground whether they be young ones or eggs and the dam sitting upon the young or upon the eggs thou shalt not take the dam with the young in other words uh, if she has uh, yeah, if this bird has youngs young uh, chicklets or whatever you want to call them with, with them with her then you're not going to uh, kill the mother and leave the babies. Verse 7. But thou shalt in any wise let the dam go, and take the young to thee, that thou, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days. 
Verse 8. When thou buildest a new house, then thou shalt make a battlement for thy roof, that thou bring not blood upon thine house, if any man fall from thence. And a battlement would be like, uh, I think it's like kind of like a fence for the top of the house so people can't fall off. Verse 9. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with thy diverse seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Verse 10. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Verse 11. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts, as of woolen and linen together. Verse 12. Thou shalt not make thee fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture wherewith thou coverest thyself. And uh, fringes... I think it's a tassel, a fringe, wreath. Verse 13. If any man take a wife and go in under her and hate her, verse 14, and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid, in other words, a virgin, verse 15. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders, of the city and the gate. Verse 16. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hateth her. Verse 17. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet those are the tokens of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Verse 18. And the elders of that city shall take that man and ch chastise him. Verse 19, And they shall immerse him in an hundred shekels of silver, and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he hath brought an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and, shall, and she shall be his wife, and he may not put her away all of his days. Verse 20, But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, verse 21, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the house of a whore, I mean to play, to play the whore of her in her father's house, so shalt thou put evil away from among you. Verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both, then sh they shall both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil from Israel. In other words, adultery. Verse 23. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her. Verse 24. Then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of the city, and ye shall stone them with stones, that they die, the damsel because she cried not, being in the city, and the man because he hath humbled his neighbor's wives, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. In other words, uh, I thought this was rape at first, but uh, I, th I I think it's uh, another thing considering adultery. In other words, because this this woman liked the man uh, who, who uh, went in under his neighbor's wife. Verse 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. And that's rape. Verse 26. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. Verse 27. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. In other words, uh, this man raped this woman in the field. Uh, and this goes on a lot in, in our, our nation today. And uh, these people are just put in prison. But I honestly think that they should be killed by the man, by the woman's husband. And if there is no husband, by the, the woman's father. Verse 28. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found. Verse 29. Then the man that lay 
With her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. Verse 30. A man shall not take his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirt. In other words, his father's nakedness. And uh, I'm going to stop right here. Um, I got more chapters done this time because I'm still less than an hour into this study. So I decided to do two, two more chapters. Uh, there's not much to say right now besides that I love all of my brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, may all the glory go to our Father in heaven in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And may uh, his peace and lo love rest upon all of you. Amen.